All right, we will get back in session. This is the May 5th, 2014 meeting of the BUHS District 6 Board. Uh, we have uh, just recently, within the last few minutes, completed an executive session uh, for student matter. And uh, we will start off um, in that matter. And is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I move that we accept the recommendation of the administration in the student matter just discussed. Second. Okay. Got that, Jane, Ruth, and Ricky? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Or abstentions? Okay. It's unanimous. All right, so we'll move to the regular agenda, and we'll start off with the clerk's report. And we have minutes of two meetings to approve. Um, April 7th regular meeting, which we did not have for our last meeting. So uh, those need to be approved. Can we start with those and the motion? I move approval of the April 7th minutes. Second. OK. Any? Additions, corrections, deletions. This is the, again the regular meeting, not the special meeting. We already approved the special meeting last time. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? No any unless abstain. Okay. All right. And we move on to the minutes of our last regular meeting, which was April 21st. Is there a motion? I move the minutes of April 27th as presented. Mm -hmm. 21st. 21st is you as presented. Yeah. 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 Second. Okay, Ricky and Ruth. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? If not, all in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? No abstentions. Okay, they are approved. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Um, I was mistaken. I was actually present for the 21st meeting. I thought we were still approving April 7th, which we already did last, last meeting. But so we just approved the regular right. meeting. Right. And I was here for that one. And Melanie so was I here, I was not. But oh, I was okay. at the special meeting, which we approved. Oh, you abstained on the April 7th one, I thought. I abstained on the April 7th, but so did she, and she shouldn't have. Oh, you she were here on April 7th? No, I wasn't here for the April 7th. Right. The regular so, meeting. For the regular, regular meeting, I was. And that's oh, what we just okay. that's what we're doing now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I tried to, to, try to keep the so two I separate. Those You're going to unabstain? Unabstain. I'm unabstained. I'm unabstained. I'm unabstained. But not me, I'm still in abstention. <laughs> Is that in Robert's Rules of Order? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm unabstained. Yeah. It's not abstain a word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Communications. Um, I received a communication from a parent. I've received a few verbal communications from parents, but this is the first time I've received a letter related to this, and it's related to dress code, and more specifically, enforcement of dress code. Um, and I've spoken with Ian as chair of the policy committee when I went to look at this after I got the letter, and it was like, when was the last time we actually did the dress code stuff? And it was over 10 years ago that we did the dress code. Like our local board policy for dress code is over 10 years old in the, in the policy manual. Um, so we're going to be bringing that up in policy to do that. But um, I received a letter from a parent um, essentially complaining about the enforcement that apparently her daughter was wearing shorts um, that were new. They were dress style shorts that the mom approved of and paid for. Um, they were too short according to the, new cur to the, according to the current policy in place. Um, but they did cover everything that needed to be covered. Mom said absolutely about that. Um, the policy states that shorts need to be the same length as the student's fingertips. It's not the same length for all. She reported that her daughter has very long arms and others have short arms. So this policy is very inconsistent at best. Um, also that her student is an honor roll student and not a problem student. Um, and she does not... Um, she is not going to argue back or cause a scene. Her daughter's not. Because um, she's not somebody that she kind of avoids conflict. However, there are many students who break the dress code policy and are not singled out. This policy is subjective at best, and enforcing this policy is not consistent to all. It appears that different that different rules apply. 
Um, if you are likely to cause a scene, you can wear whatever you want, but a quiet A student who has to pass a mom test before she's allowed to leave the house and you are threatening her with either being sent home or an ISS. Um, would also ask the policy be revisited and equally enforced throughout the entire school. The policy needs to be made less subjective, dependent on moral values of individuals. Um, my daughter did an impromptu poll uh, on the day, asking all of her teachers if they thought that her attire was offensive. Although the question of length was brought up, none of them thought her clothing was inappropriate or dis disrespectful to the BUHS community. She also had, the mom also had a problem with the, the notice that um, disciplinary action that she got, which I know is a standard form letter that had the student's name in it, but said that she was referred for a behavioral reason because she violated the dress code, which seems, which I know that technically that's the case, but mom had a real problem with the use of the word behavior as far as a dress, as, as far as a, what seemed to be a relatively minor dress code violation. So I know that we'll bring it back up on the board, but do we have more discussions to come? And uh, that will be taken into consideration by the policy committee based on the unbelievable ten years since we put that together. Yeah, when, when I looked it up, when I looked it up on, on when I looked up in the policy book and I saw the date of adoption, I was I was I was shocked because it feels like we were just yesterday that we spent weeks talking about dress codes. So. No bell bottoms. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ricky. Mm -hmm. Any other communications? Anything else for the clerk's report? Okay, move on. Recognition of groups and individual visitors. There being none, we'll move to the next item, which is consent agenda. Is there a motion? I move forward to consent agenda. I'll I say. think Melanie got started before you did on that one, Ruth. Give, give her one, okay? That's fine. <laughs> Would you like to second it? I will second. Mm. It's the person at the end that always makes the That's right, it's always the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're in consent agenda. Uh, and we'll start off with Finance Committee. Okay, so it's my turn anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Finance Committee met on April 23rd at 7 a.m. and we approved the, form, the following warrants. Numbers 1204, 1206, 1207, 1209, 1210, 1211, and 1212 for a total of $187,564.77. And we also discussed the Ames Fund and the phones, I believe. Uh, I don't think we did too much on the phones at that one because they're, they're uh, we're in the process of bids, which we have now, and we will be taking a look at uh, on Wednesday, I believe. It looks um, that way. Yeah, but we, um, with regards to the uh, Eames Fund, we did make recommendations for dispensing of, of uh, scholarships and I believe we were we recommended adding a fourth scholarship for this year based on the good return that the fund is experiencing and we will have reports we have two fund managers for this Eames fund and Wells Fargo and Edward Jones and we will be uh, meeting with uh, fund managers uh, account managers rather for for those uh, within the next month or so. I think we've got uh, one scheduled for May 7th, and which would be Wednesday, and one for May 21st. At least that was Jim's intent, just to get an update report. But the fund is performing quite well, as one might imagine, in this market. And the uh, managers are doing a great job with it. And uh, so we uh, agree for this year to add on one more scholarship. So it gives an, yet another student an opportunity. Yes. Well, that doesn't have to be brought up at the full board level. That's the yeah. discretion of the finance committee. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, that, that sounds great. I'm just wondering if there's any left over, because there have been some years where things haven't done so well and it's been postponed. I wonder if there's any sort of 
sinking fund or whatever it is for um, it's instead of roofs and boilers, but you know for for down markets so that so that we can give scholarships even in. Well, that that certainly is a possible. I mean, we we've had now. I, I think the year that we decided not to do anything, if I'm not mistaken, was four years ago. Probably I think it was 2008. Yeah, that would was be that far year. ago. Okay, that would be. It was shortly after the it. dress code policy was <laughs> right. uh, and the economy went in the tank. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, there's been generally pretty good performance, and mm. uh, you know, realistically, yes, we could probably even expand it a little further, but you never know, you know, it's, it's nice to have a little cushion there. So oh, we yeah. did feel it was made sense to expand it a little oh, bit. Yeah. No, no, of course, you know, once we do that, we're, we're basically committed to three years yeah. of that extra, extra one. Yeah, sounds, good. sounds good. And there was talk also about making sure that as many students be informed about the possibility of the scholarship. Yes. Yeah. So it's very specific for art really yes. endeavors. Yeah. So art architecture and the way that I believe. <clears throat> yeah. So it's a great opportunity. Okay. Students in this room, sure. So our next meeting is Wednesday at seven AM, is that correct? It is okay. Wednesday, May seventh at seven AM yeah. in and the central office. And uh, just to make sure that Sean knows we have this on the, on the radar still. We are still working on the uh, use of water at the school. We yeah. are? Yeah. It would be interesting to hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll come again with a new dress code, probably, to report on the water usage. But it, it's, uh, it, it, it's ongoing. It's, it's quite, a, quite a bit to unravel, but uh, I forget about it. Okay, planning and policy. Um, the uh, Ricky's letter was uh, rather coincidental because if you'll recall, way back before budget, I had mentioned that the next local policy that would be coming up was gonna be dress code. And uh, I have been waiting for a slate of policies to come down to tack it on with. Um, they haven't been coming, so just going to go ahead and start with that one. So we will be meeting before the next regular meeting and the dress code policy will be um, our agenda. That's probably a, enough for a, an agenda, isn't it? So, I mean, uh, it's, it's not gonna, uh, I am expecting that in that meeting, mostly what we're gonna talk about is what we need to talk about and who's gonna be involved. Uh, because I think this is something that we're gonna want a lot of input in, uh, you know, discussions on, not just with our committee, but the students and faculty and everybody. But we'll let you know about that. Okay, so there will be an upcoming meeting. Teacher curriculum. Um, teacher curriculum committee met earlier this evening, um, and we went over 1% funds um, for the working on 1% of the teacher proposals. And we got we approved eight of those, um, and we'll be approving more in the future um, and looking at more in the future. But there was eight that were ready to come for us tonight, so we did that this evening before our, our meeting. Could you just remind me on the uh, ones that have been approved? We kind of started to do a bit of a follow up. Is there, is there a schedule for that, um, or are you just there's not a schedule per se, where, but we are looking at how to how to do follow up and what that follow up. Okay, how about the BAMS committee? Um, the BAMS committee met this morning at 7.45 in the BAMS conference room, and we went, also went over 1% funds, and we looked at the 1% um, on all the proposals, and we approved 14 1% proposals um, out of that this morning. So, And also that came out of the BAMS committee meeting, the suggestion came up um, from Mrs. Crisco to about one of our board education times was to have the teachers come in and do a demo about how they're using Chromebooks in the middle school. They did some stuff. Some of the teachers that have really accessed, found ways to access them in really creative and great ways have done some demonstrations for other teachers within, within the BAMS community. And I thought, and 
I think we all thought at the Vance community this morning that would be a great board education thing for all of us since Chromebooks are very active in the middle school and are going to be more active and then because all of the ninth graders are getting them next year, that that would be a really great thing for us to see different creative ways for them to be used by the teachers. So we have something for the next um, our board education for May. Um, Steve will have a presentation for our next meeting. Typically we do not meet the second meeting in June after graduation. Could we do that on the first meeting in June or would that be too no, we could definitely do that. Get something together for that. that date. So that'd be June second? June second. I think it'd be nice to, to hear that before the end of the year since they'll be, they'll be jumping into it right at the beginning of the following year. Yeah. Okay. Something else to go uh, if you wait till next year, though, then you'd be invited back. Is, I, I, I'm curious in terms of how the um, foreign language in the middle school has changed since at least the Brattleboro schools have been doing French and Spanish, and just wondering, because we, I was on the board then, on the town board, and just wondering how things have worked out and how things have changed. And then in the high school, I asked the middle school students who have more language how oh, that's filtered up. Up to here. So. I can give you a little information when it's time for me to make my report, and then yeah, inviting yeah. Suzanne Grenoble in I think would be a terrific idea as well. Yeah, I mean that can next be year, right? What's that? Oh, sorry. Oh, I was wondering in the uh, in the Chromebook education piece, um, since the Common Core is sort of tied in to some extent with the use of the Chromebooks. Whether the, there could be, a, you know, an education piece on what Common Core is meaning for the school. So unfortunately, I I feel kind of uninformed. Yeah, they the BAMS teachers could easily show you those connections with the work that they're doing with the Chromebooks. Yeah, I think there'll be probably more than one board education session around Common Core as we move forward because there is a lot to it and yeah. it has a lot of implications that the board would be interested in and maybe involved in. So that's a good point. Uh, be sure we keep that as we start planning our board education for either summer and or um, into the fall. Yeah, I think the Common Core thing would be really valuable actually because I'm seeing so much misinformation out there about Common Core that it would be really nice to empower at least those of us on the board with a little uh, truth to counter a lot of the fiction that I see out in the public. Okay. That it for yep. bands. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, WRCC has not met, but we are um, we we're going were, to meet. Don't we think. were unable to meet on Friday, but we are going to talk shortly after this meeting and um, get together in the next few days to review the Perkins grant. And uh, and there is uh, another matter that Michael will bring up in his report. Okay. I guess that's it for consent agenda. Is there a motion to accept consent agenda? I move we accept consent agenda. Second. Okay, moved by Ruth, second by Sean. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Hearing none, it's unanimous. <coughs> and we'll move to administrative reports. And I'm going to start with English. You're not going to get too many more times to go first, so. <laughs> Um, okay, I do have a couple candidates to present to you this evening, and um, these are the last two for this year, which I'm really happy about. Uh, also, just a little bit of news, uh, our POPs concert is coming up on May 15th. We always do a daytime assembly for the student body on the day of the evening concert. Uh, it serves a number of uh, functions, which also includes teaching our students how to be good audience members, and um, they never cease to amaze us at just how well even they can be. So that's on May 15th. The concert will be at 2 in the afternoon, the assembly, and evening, 7 o'clock for parents. 
for anyone who may want to come. Last Friday, we showed a film to our students on Diversity Day called Brooklyn Castle. And if you have not seen it, it's a PBS film. I, I highly encourage you to um, watch it if, you, if it comes your way. It's about a public school in Brooklyn, PS318, uh, which has more than a 70% um, poverty rate in their school. And ostensibly, it's about chess and the impact of after-school programming on the development of students with the chess club being at the centerpiece of it. Uh, it's, it's about much more than that, though, and um, about setting goals and perseverance and believing in one's, one's self and capabilities. This school is the first ever middle school to win a high school national championship chess middle school beat out all the high schools that competed. They've won um, more than 30 national titles in the time that this after school club has been going. And so it, it does um, reflect the impact of what I think beams can have for kids for sure. But as I say, it's about a lot more than after school programming, but it's well worth watching. Our kids were phenomenal and loved the film. And loved the film. So I'm glad What's to be the title again? Brooklyn Castle. Oh. It's a PBS film. Um, Chromebooks, uh, we will have enough money to purchase Chromebooks for grade seven next year, grade eight has been using them this year, as you know, and um, the current grade eight teachers will keep their Chromebooks for their new batch of seventh graders next year. The current grade seven teachers moving into grade eight, we are purchasing Chromebooks so that um, every student at BAMS will now have a Chromebook at um, his or her disposal through the course of the day. We are not sending them home at, well, I don't know what will happen moving into the future, but um, that's not part of the plan at the moment. Um, I will say that we have um, a number of, of uh, laptop computers that are quite old. I apprised the BAMS committee of this today. And we are interested in um, having a lottery and giving them to the current seventh graders who don't have computers at home, um, which means that effectively um, students could engage in a one-to-one -one computing uh, approach without us having to give them a computer to take home if they don't have one at home. Uh, because much of what they're going to be doing is web-based and Google Docs, which they can access as long as they can find internet, either at home or in the community. So we talked about that um, and decided to try to give out some of these very old computers that are just sitting in a closet right now and see if we can't, can't put them to some good use for kids. Um, okay, in terms of the two candidates, um, we, as you may or may not recall, Jean Nolan is taking a two-year uh, leave to go to Nigeria to teach. And so, um, a number of weeks ago, we interviewed special ed candidates for that opening. And then we, uh, had an unexpected opening in academic support. And out of the original special ed pool of candidates, there were two who surfaced as very strong. And um, they are Caitlin Campbell and Angela Schatz. And they are the two candidates that I would like to present to you. One for the two-year special ed position, which is Jean's position, and the other for the vacant um, academic support position, which will be a regular contract. Caitlin was my student at Keene Middle School um, some years ago now. I was her principal. I, I got to know her quite well, so I was really delighted when she applied um, to work here. She came here three times, once to interview for special ed, once to teach a lesson um, for special ed, and then she came back to interview for the academic support teacher. And 
she told me that uh, she was applying nowhere else and that she was holding out hope that she would get hired at BAMS to do something. And she would have taken whichever job we would have given to her. So uh, today I called her and asked if she would accept the academic support. She said yes. She was thrilled. She has a master's degree from Keene State in special education. Uh, but sometimes academic support teachers come from the world of special education and they do quite well having had that background. She's had one year of teaching experience, so she's um, rather a newbie. She's currently teaching in Claremont at the Disnard Elementary School. Um, but she is very excited to be coming to BAMS. Do you want to hear about the second person or do you want to take action? Why don't we deal with that? First one okay. first. And what first. was the name? Her name is Caitlin Campbell. Campbell. I would move that we approve the hiring of Caitlin Campbell as the academic support teacher at BAMS. Second. Second. Okay. Who? I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. Been moved and seconded. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? None. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Candidate number two. Candidate number two is Angela Slowinski Schatz, but I believe she'll go by Schatz, her married name. Uh, she's currently working in the Bahamas on the island of um, Elothera, and we Skyped with her. Um, she, she wanted to do a house swap? <laughs> <laughs> well, as she says in her letter, um, I'm going to read you just a little bit of this. She is a special ed teacher from Massachusetts. She's currently teaching math and running student support um, at a small settlement school on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas. Two years ago, my husband accepted a head of school position at the Cape Eleuthera Island School and I was offered a position at the affiliated middle school. Since it seemed that we were given too good of an offer to turn down, we accepted positions. Though it's beautiful down here, it's too far away from home, and we're both ready to be closer to family. In June, we'll be moving back to the southern Vermont Western Mass area. Um, so uh, they are coming back. We, as I say, we Skyped with her. Uh, and then we asked her to send us a lesson that she taught down there on video, and she sent it up to us. So although we couldn't get her here for the process, we felt like she was meeting the, the conditions of the process, and she did a terrific job. Middle school um, boys and girls for a math lesson. So um, she's taught for eight years. Uh, middle school and high school and older folks, she will say in here she's taught children as young as three and as old as 21. Um, she's taught grade seven algebra, geometry, algebra two, science and English, and she's taught all subjects at the middle school level, including computers and PE. She's a very, very strong young woman, and um, I'm excited to have a special educator who has such a strong background in math in particular. Uh, so I would like to, um, she would like to run a, um, a scuba club, so uh, something's going to have to ch change for, <laughs> for that to happen. Um, and, yeah, I see a capital request. <laughs> <laughs> She's particularly interested in, in advising student government, eco club, running club, and she has coached track. She says, I'm a motivated individual who's looking to work in a school that expects results, but also appreciates creativity and offers upward growth opportunities for additional responsibilities. Um, so she impressed um, us very well, and her lesson was quite strong. So she would be coming in for the two-year position, Angela Schatz, S-C-H-A-T-Z. I move that we approve the hiring of Angela Schatz for the two-year special education position at the Second. Second by Russ. Okay. <laughs> Any questions or comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Hearing none, it's unanimous. I, I do have a question, though, because 
Switch, uh, special ed has been switched over district wide, right? Yeah. So we hire, uh, even though it's a district wide. Um, that's a good question. Uh, we haven't been told otherwise, and um, we still supervise these individuals who work in our buildings. The funding source is being consolidated at the SBA <coughs> level, but in every other way, it'll look like it currently looks. Right. Kind of curious, so. Yeah, maybe you want to let the SU board know when you did this. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> or, or maybe you know. We hired students. Yeah, and that hasn't come up, Sean. We haven't been told. Um, shouldn't be told. <laughs> yeah, maybe it might not make any difference at all, but it's all of a sudden we hire somebody, somebody else is going to pay for it. So, Jim Hines, Jim and Ron, what's your Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Right. Well, well, we're Did still paying. You know, it's, it's consolidating the funds, but yeah. District 6 is contributing a right. significant amount right. to special ed as right. we have been. No, I'm just sort of wondering what yeah. it yeah. yeah, it's your it's your dollars at work here. <laughs> and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Perrin? Sure. Um, first and Probably most important, I'm thrilled to announce um, the class of 2014 valedictorian. Um, we just got it. Um, hot off the press, well, Friday, so it's not that hot. Um, but our, our valedictorian this year is Kevin Tao. Uh, Kevin yeah. resides in Brattleboro. Yeah. He is planning to attend um, Michigan, University of Michigan next year. And um, Kevin is very proud. Um, a little nervous about giving speech, but I promised him we'd help him with that. And our salutatorian is Ethan Reitzman, and uh, you know Ethan is another outstanding student who has traveled abroad extensively, and um, certainly like Kevin represents the best academics that BUHS has to offer. Um, Ethan will be attending Deep Springs College next year, and so uh, both these gentlemen have worked very hard, and I'm very proud of that uh, they are valedictorian and salutatorian. Um, the valedictorian's last name? Tao. T-A-O. T-A-O. Um, I also have, for your reading pleasure, the Bravo Beacon. Uh, as usual, it's a great issue. Um, some tongue-in-cheek stuff, some serious stuff. It's, it's great. Uh, I would draw your attention really quickly to page four, out of the Enough to Humor page. But the bottom of the humor page, um, they are looking for um, graduation ads. So if you know any graduates, you can take out an ad to congratulate them. So if you know a senior, it would be a great way to kind of acknowledge them. The deadline is June 1st. I will accept ad copy and pass it along to the Beacon staff where you can give it to Marilee Atley. And uh, Marilee has done a fantastic job this year kind of rejuvenating the paper and really making it come alive. So much so that none of you are paying attention to me right now. <laughs> and that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> you can do you come to the That's true. No full page ad. You can do a full page. Well, I will get you a full page. Uh, so uh, the beacon is, you know, it's, it's great. Sean? On this, I, I was just, I think there was an article in the last issue about the dress code from a student. There was. So you need that when you get the brain. I, I think I just recycled my yeah. So I don't have a copy of it, okay. but uh, it might be good to sure. review that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, can you find it online? It is not online. I don't think it's not. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, last Thursday, um, a group of our Above the Influence students, um, they represent substance resistance and self-esteem. Uh, in the high school. Um, it's a fairly large group, but a group of five students went up and they were honored by the legislature. They were one of two students, groups in the state that were recognized for their work. And um, they got a chance to see Representative Hebert, um, Governor Shumlin, and Mr. Galbraith. So they spent some time up there and uh, had a great time and really enjoyed their time. Um, science and kneecaps are a full swing. Um, they'll go on this week and next week. Also this week and next week are advanced placement exams. Um, they're going on right now as well for students that are enrolled in AP courses. Um, we have gotten back our NEASC report, our New England Association of Schools and Colleges report. 
Uh, I've seen a copy. Um, mem some members of the steering committee have seen a copy. Uh, and right now, uh, we're rolling it out to individual faculty members. And the way we're doing it is we're having faculty members who are on a certain standard committee. So everybody chooses, you know, they're on assessment or they're on school culture or they're on um, community resources for education. Right now, the faculty is reviewing the report. We'll have two more faculty meetings where we'll continue that review process. Because um, I wanted to make sure that we were conversant with the report and the faculty members had a chance to, to look at, especially the section they worked on, to look at the whole report. And then on May 19th, we'll be releasing it to the public. That includes you folks. And on, on the meeting May 19th, I'll have a summary of the NAAC report. It will be given to town libraries, town offices, our elementary schools. Um, so it will get a wide distribution. And that same day on the 19th, we'll release the full report to our local media as well. Um, there were no surprises, nothing that we really didn't anticipate seeing. Um, we were given high marks for our community support, which was great to see. And um, we, were, we were commended for a lot of the good things that we do every day in the building. So it was, a, it was really kind of validation that we were doing great stuff here. Um, Friday, we had Diversity Day. And that went very well as well. We had several great workshops, one on um, sexualized um, vocabulary and what it means when somebody hears in a casual situation, several on class and racial issues, um, a really compelling one on injustice through photography. And so people actually went through and they documented um, samples of injustice that they'd seen. Um, the day ended with the Young at Heart Chorus from Northampton, and it's a group of of folks that are young at heart, just as it sounds, and they did two great shows in the auditorium for the students to kind of demonstrate that rock and roll and good music spans um, the ages. It was kind of fun. And along those same lines, on the 22nd, we'll have the BUHS Pops concert. Um, that's coming up. And also, we have 11 musicians, musicians going to St. Johnsbury on Thursday to rehearse and perform with the All-State Music Festival Ensembles. Those concerts are Friday night and Saturday afternoon. So, um, as usual, the music department continues to, to be outstanding. Um, last, I have a couple of personnel changes to make you aware of. I have two resignations to share. I have a, um, a proposal for a hiring as well. First, um, in the social studies department, uh, social studies teacher Karen Henry is not returned to UHS in the fall. Um, she's decided to pursue, pursue a graduate program that will not allow her to work at the same time. Um, she thanks us for the opportunity to teach at UHS for the past 12 years, and uh, it's really been an honor for her. You know, we're going to miss Karen. She is an awesome social studies teacher, does a great job for our students, but um, wants to go to graduate school, so I really respect that. So I'd ask the board to accept Karen's resignation. I move with Karen Henry's designation with regret. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Okay. Okay. Um, we're also losing, after eight years, uh, we're losing our student assistance program coordinator, uh, Mary Ann Kinney. She has found a position. Valley as a school counselor. She's wanted to be a school counselor for a few years now, and uh, we wish her well that she is going to stay up on the mountain. And so I would ask that the board accept Mary Ann Kinney's resignation as well. I move we accept Mary Ann Kinney's resignation with regret. Second. Second. Becky, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Hearing none. Accepted. So in the other direction, um, I'm very pleased to recommend the appointment of Ms. Rebecca Olmsted as a nurse at Broadway Union High School beginning in July. Um, Ms. Olmsted will replace Maureen McDonald, who uh, tendered her resignation earlier after 19 years at VHS. Um, we had nine people apply for the position. We interviewed five. The interviewing committee consisted of myself, Kate Margais, Jerry Curry, uh, Nurse Linda Rinder, paraprofessional Carrie Collett, and school board member Ruth Barton. Um, when we had our conversations and our deliberations, um, we were very impressed with a lot of Rebecca's attributes. 
Um, she brings a couple of things that were key of us. She is in the state of Vermont, one of the leading experts in immunization practices, and so we're excited to have her here for that. Uh, she also is trained in incident command and, and uh, emergency response, so hopefully we'll never need that, but it's a good, it's a good toolkit to have in the building. Um, so Rebecca, I, you know, she, her mom um, actually was a school nurse in the district as well. Uh, she does live locally here, and we're very excited to have her join us. So I'm asking the board to appoint Rebecca Holmes as a school nurse. <clears throat> Is there a motion accordingly? I would be happy to move the appointment of Rebecca Olmsted as a school nurse. Second. Second. Melanie. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Hearing none. The appointment is approved. Thank you. That's, that's tough for me. She's worked for the state for a long time. We use her services all the time. And I, at the doctor's office, I'm looking. She's very valuable. She's that's going to be a hard replacement for the state. Yes. Great. Good. Thanks. Don't forget about the state. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry right about the state. Uh, okay. Uh, in the regional career center, Michael. Excellent. Last, well, this past Friday and Saturday, two of our seniors from the automotive electrical systems class, Ryan Duford of BUHS and Aaron Graham from Hinsdale High School attended the Ford AAA Auto Competition with their teacher Jim Valliere in Epping, New Hampshire. The students competed against student, other students from Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and Ryan and Aaron placed fourth place out of 17 tech centers across the state of Vermont. With that, they receive, each received tools, t-shirts, a jacket, a backpack, coffee mug, and certificates, plus $5,000 scholarships from the University of Northwestern Ohio, a $1,000 scholarship from Ohio Technical College, and also a $1,000 scholarship from UTI, which is wonderful for these seniors in the automotive field. Both students had a great experience and learned a lot and walked away with their memories that will last a lifetime. Automotive teacher Jim Valliere stated, he was very proud to say these students represented our career center with complete professionalism. So, I have a couple of pictures that I'd like to share that Jim shared with me for these two students at the competition. And it's a, very, it's a great opportunity for our students to experience these types of opportunities as Career Center students. Our Future Farmers of America chapter just uh, sent four students to Oklahoma City the entire week last week. They were uh, Sam Rushton, Adriana Rhodes, Cassie Bratton, and Oscar Smith to compete in the FFA uh, National Soils Competition, which they placed first in the state of Vermont in the fall. They competed against 1,200 students from 37 states. And although Mr. Hamilton said they did a great job, they had a great experience, they probably fell somewhere in the middle of the placement which is pretty good for that many students. This was the first time that all four students have ever traveled out of New England. So it was a very great experience for these young kids. And they had a great, wonderful educational opportunity and learned an abundance of information about red soil. If you've ever been to Oklahoma, all the soil and ground is red. <laughs> WRCC uh, <clears throat> named the student of the month, and that is Dan Fuchs, and he was nominated by Betsy Gentili, our adult ed coordinator and student ambassador advisor. Dan has been a student ambassador for us. He's enrolled in many business courses and is an FBLA officer. Dan has also taught an adult education class this past semester, 
or this actually just a few weeks ago I wrapped up, to I think 15 adults pertaining to electronic devices. So it was a great experience for Dan to participate and I asked him today how he felt that how he felt as a teacher. He said it was a great experience that uh, he probably would not go to college for it. <laughs> I do have one personnel uh, <clears throat> issue or matter that I'd like to present to the board. And this is for a paraeducator resignation. And this is for Mr. Winston Pasha. He has been the paraeducator for the automotive program for 10 years and has been a very valuable asset to the kids and community of WRCC and will be highly missed by myself and by the students as well. And I will read this quick letter that he's written to me in the board. Dear Mr. Burnett, it is with mixed emotions that I submit a letter of resignation from the Paraeducator Automotive Technologies Department. I request this take effect June 30, 2014. He's also this year been a part-time bus driver for WRCC for our off-campus programs, our dance programs, and our circus programs. So he will <clears throat> would like to continue to drive our bus and also be a WRCC support for us if the board accepts that. So, so what would that be in terms of a part-time position? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Be a five-hour duty. Five hours a day, <clears throat> uh, and then you would plan to replace the uh, fair educator. Para yeah. educator. Mm -hmm. What what is his? Uh, what are the hours of that position? Fair the fair educator is a six-hour position. Oh, okay. Well, at this point, we just deal with the matter of the resignation. Yes. I believe. Is there a motion? I move we accept the resignation of Mr. Pasha as the automotive paraeducator with regret. Okay. Second. Second. Melody. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? None. Accepted. Is that it? I just uh, was wondering at what point we start to get an indication of uh, sign up levels for next semester's courses and uh, sending school activity. Any feel for that yet? I will have that report for next uh, board meeting. The next board meeting. Yeah, the sending schools are still in the process. Yeah, I, of I wasn't sure where we were. Registering yeah. at the Career Center. So that should be wrapped up within a week. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, central office is not represented and I was not given anything to present on their behalf. So I guess we can move on to unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? Is there any new business? I just have a question. Um, looking at this paper that you uh, handed out here, Steve, mm -hmm. the um, youth risk behavior results, mm -hmm. Some of those look alarming. Um, are we going to discuss those at some point? Yeah, we did the faculty, and actually, Sean and I had a discussion that brought Sean a gift today. Um, so we can, yeah, we can put that on the agenda to talk about. I had received a phone call. I probably should have brought this up in the communication, so I called Steve about it. Um, and so it's the beginning of a further conversation, I think. And it, I mean, you can go online um, and just Google Youth Risk Behavior Survey Vermont 2013. And then on the state's website, on the agency website, it's broken out by um, supervisor and union. And since we're the only high school in the supervisor union, you can see our, our results there. So that has all the results right there online? Yep. Yeah. And where, where, where is that? If, if you just Google, just Google it. Yeah, it's there. It's on the Agency of Education website. Is that something we'd like to have as, uh, as part of Steve's 
presentation or a separate board education session or either way. It'd probably be separate. Yeah. yeah. What I'd probably do is have um, Miriam, can you come in? Or her replacement next year. Okay. And kind of share that with the board. All right. So that would be appropriate for probably realistically we're now looking at the beginning of beginning of the school year, I would think. We're starting to get or we more educated. Or we do it the summer session. Or summer, yeah. Right. Right. Either way. Yeah. Okay. And we will soon, I guess probably our <coughs> first June meeting, we will talk about the summer schedule. Um, and I assume on that agenda we'll probably have the, the usual uh, tools of summer powers for the various committees. June the second, I think, first. Yep. Yep. But we still have the other one meeting in May first. Okay, is there any other new business? If not, I move we adjourn. Really? Second. Rest on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Okay, thank you very much.